I, there's a difference between perfectionism and excellence, which I think is the conversation. Because a lot of people use this word excellence, and what they actually mean is perfection. They're looking for the exact compressed snare sound, the right kick sound, the right guitar sound, the right this, the right that. I mean, you're talking to a guy who 90% of the time leads worship with a three-quarter size Ed Sheeran guitar that costs $300, and I run distortion through it. And so nah. for me... I'm like, let's throw out all the rules. Yeah, Why yeah. do any of these rules exist? Because we've made them up so that we feel good about the way we're performing it, so that we don't ever have to deal with real excellence. Hey guys, this is Benlam with Benlam TV, Revival Connects, and here we are today in Portland, Oregon with Jake Hamilton. God bless you, man. Bless you, bro. Come on, so good. Now, uh, I was so impressed earlier when I met you, you know, I saw your children and I saw your parents here. Yeah. Now, how often do you travel with your whole family? Well, that changed in the last three years, so I'm going to give you the very short version is our marriage went through just a complete upheaval not because of any sin or addictions or anything yeah. it was really just like hey i'm gone a lot stuff is crazy we need to reconnect and thank god for spiritual moms and dads wow. reconnect and then what we did was we shifted our whole ministry to focus on families and marriages and um not just ours but others and we felt like well we can't really like preach this message if we're not going to live it so let's take the family so now in the last three years my wife preaches with me and we wow. travel with the whole family probably 75% of the time now. Wow, wow. Yeah. Well, I do remember uh, just around that time frame, you and your wife, you were releasing videos yes. uh, on marriage that and just it. super vulnerable, super real and raw. I mean, share with us that journey of like, it went from this music ministry to now Yeah, well, I, this is my 20th year in full-time ministry. Congratulations. So, yeah, we've Come been on. in full-time ministry 20 years this year. Church planters, house of prayer, 24-7 prayer. So we've been in kind of, and between me and my wife, we've pretty much played every role in ministry. And so what happened was, is I think for most young leaders, you end up believing that your ministry to God is relationship with God. Mm. And so the more you do, the closer wow. you must be, you know, all the stuff, you know, we're sacrificing for Jesus. It's all for Jesus. When in reality, it's a work-based model that we're just reproducing. Mm. You know, there's, I mean, I would say it as bluntly as, look, there's no such job as itinerant minister. That's not really a job. You know, it's yep, like, yep. you know, there Come are on. missionaries, there are these things, but at the end of the day, we're making up roles to fulfill needs inside of us, which aren't evil. That's not sin. You know, don't, mishear me. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying for us, it led to this place of disconnection and really thank God in his sovereignty. He saved us from any um, real damaging stuff that people experience every day from yeah. affairs to pornography to drugs, alcohol, whatever it is that they get super addicted to. Mm. I, um, we just basically had an explosion with Chris Valentin in the room. My wife was able to just say things wow. that she's never been able to say to any man wow. because she didn't have a dad. So yeah. to any man. So now I'm not just me, her husband. I'm representative of every man that's wounded her or hurt her. Wow. So that explosion took place at one of the largest meetings I'd ever played at at the time. Mm. Played at Jesus Culture Chicago okay. Awakening. And the I next, heard that was a historic one. It was a historical yeah, event yeah. for me, for her, for Jesus Culture, for Bethel. Yeah. I mean, it was a historical moment really for the movement as a whole. And we got to be a part of it. So I was super humbled. I was like, how did I make it here? These are promises from God yeah, when I was yeah. 18. You know, I'm crying. And, Come on, and yeah. the next morning my marriage falls apart. And it was wow. as if God said, here's Isaac. Do you, do you want me or the promise? Wow. Yeah. And then when you offer up the promise... He comes back around and gives you everything your heart desired anyway, which is Come on. basically the sh the law. It's a huge story, but you can go watch. The, you, like you said, there's videos and all sorts of stuff. But essentially, God restored us. And when he restored our connection, wow! because that's the whole goal. Everyone in humanity is looking for the same thing. They're looking for connection. Yep. And so when we got that in our house and we started sharing our stories with other leaders, Come on. they were saying, Hey, can we talk to you guys later? Come on. Hey, our marriage is falling apart. Hey, Jesus. And we're yeah. like, yeah, let's hang. Yeah, yeah. So that's how we ended up doing the videos. Because we're like, look, we're pretty crappy pastors. Because we're more like prophetic edge, blow stuff uh -huh. up. All right, man, good luck with that. Let me see how that works out. <laughs> but we like, at the end of the day, we're like, but we can tell stories. Yeah. So we just gathered up all our friends, tricked half of them. You know, hey, go ahead and sit down. We just want to interview. Just like this. Wow, want to interview. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be awesome. Tell us your marriage story. And they were like, uh -huh. I'm sorry, what? 
Yeah. Like, I thought we were going to talk Bible. We gonna, mm -hmm. like, no, dude, let's tell, we just want to hear the real story. stuff. Yeah. We don't want any of your theology on it. Yeah, come on. We just want to hear your story. Wow. Because wow. in the midst of your story, somebody else can hear theirs. Wow. And they'll get hope for their journey. Yeah. And that was the entire goal for us, honestly, mm. man. It was like, our marriage fell apart. We're pretty crappy at doing it half the time. And I think most people feel the same. Mm. It doesn't matter if it's truth or not. Do you get what I'm saying? Sure, sure. It's, they're experiencing it. Yeah. So we're like, Hey, let's just tell stories mm. and then let people go on their journey. Come on. And trust that Holy Spirit will meet them. That's good. You know? And, and do you feel like your ministry, uh, the anointing, even the music, do you feel like that's even grown or oh, become yeah. more authentic, developed? I mean, I don't even know. Well, it just, it transitions. I mean, we all, yeah. I mean, the Bible's very seasonal in terms of like how its language is, you know, in due season to reap a harvest if you, you know, don't give up. It's like seasonal, you know? Yeah. So there's seasons of reaping and plowing and sowing and all this stuff. And so for us, it was really about like, wow, I did this years of leading worship with Jesus culture and all this stuff that was like a dream. Like who gets to do this stuff? Still to this day, I'm Come like on. sitting with all, I still get to be in the room. Yeah. Like the fact that that's all I ever wanted, honestly, is just to be in the room. And so I'm like in Come the on. room and I'm like, Jesus, you're so good. And then I'm, I, and then in the midst of being able to sing declarative, declarative, um, prophetic, unctions into these nations, into these places. Come on. Cause I don't, the best part about doing events like this is like with Jeremy Riddle, he gets to like, he's just going to lead us to the throne. Mm -hmm. That's just where he's going to take yeah, us. You know on. what I'm saying? And me, I'm going to go punch a hole in something, come on, you know? Yeah. But the best part is when you're doing it as family. So for me, I've been able in my journey of music, become more and more authentic and being like, mm. I know who I am. Yeah. Yeah. I know who my family is. We have our we have our hearts aligned. We are in this together. No matter what happens or who applauds at the end of the night or who invites us, we are together. So now I have greater authority to mm. sing what I'm actually feeling in here is God. Because yeah. sometimes you're like, well, I don't I know. You got to make. Yep. Well, how do you? You know, there's stuff I even said today that I'm like, well, you know. <laughs> that's like, uh, you know, that's not necessarily a singable chorus, but yeah, it's yeah. but it has to be said. We, wow. We're feeling it. It has to be said. So it's really made me more authentic because I know where my home is. Yeah. I know where my home is. I know who my covenant friends are. Come on. And at the end of the day, like they're going to be there. Yeah. And I'm okay with Jesus in this journey. So it's changed the authenticity even to a greater degree, probably in the last few years, more than anything else. Wow. Wow. You know? That's so good. And I mean, uh, we, we so love and believe in the prophetic yeah. and all of that. And of course, the prophetic, it confronts, yeah. you know, like you said, you like to punch a hole in the wall yeah. and, you know, <laughs> real, yeah, you're a hey, yeah. bang, bang, you're, yeah. you know, real rah, rah totally. and, uh, you know, like screamo type and yeah. you're just like, like a real prophet, you know, a voice in yeah. the desert place. But how do you keep that intention and balance with honor at oh. the same time? Well, you got to have, pa it's always balance of prophetic and pastoral. Okay. So if you watch the sets that mm. I plan, you'll watch what I'll do is I'll always plan one or two songs at the very beginning that I'm like, you're going to get this. Yeah, yeah. You know these songs. I'm going to tell you you're safe. It's going to be okay. We're going <laughs> to make it. <laughs> yeah. Then I just start to like edge in and then I start to get into the declaration. I start to get into the stuff that I'm like, okay, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, whatever I'm feeling from the Lord. Now I've done this for 20 years mm -hmm. of like going like, oh, I can sing the chorus on the fly. Yeah. So I'll write all my songs, almost all of my songs are written on the fly in a meeting. Love and then it. I just take that yeah. and I transplant it, maybe fix the phrasing a little bit. Sure. But that's the song. It's done. Love we fixed it. the arrangement, but outside of that, we're done. Yeah. And so for me, I'll do this boom, 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 bam, 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 bam. <laughs> God, you're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. Yeah. So it's like I get to be able to kind of push stuff around uh -huh. because my whole goal is I'm not interested in being right. I'm interested in you questioning things you've never questioned. Mm. So I'm not, I don't have any presumption that I'm right yeah, yeah. at all. Zero. Half my fr phrasing is super extreme. Mm. Like, but I feel like what I'm doing is I'm going way over here so that you go, I don't know if that's right. But I'm going to go home and read my Bible. Mm. Well, I just won. That's good. You went home and read your Bible. You went home and yeah. prayed. You went home and sought God. Great. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to be right. Yeah. I just challenged everything you thought you knew about church, maybe your walk, maybe Jesus, how he does things. I questioned it with a phrase so that you could rethink and reshape 
how you relate to God mm. in a very significant way. And then at the end of it, I'm almost always end with something so familiar to remind us, honestly, you guys, good. half that stuff doesn't even matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come like on. fix it's your good. eyes on Jesus. That's good. You know, so I'm, and most of honor, you mentioned the word honor. Mm -hmm. Most of the honor is about relational leadership. So I come in and I'll be here praying until we'll, I'll be, we'll be the guys laying hands on people on the streets as we're come leaving. Yeah. Everyone can say hello. I'm not gonna hide in a green room. We're come gonna on. go hug everyone. Hey, come and, on. Cause the stories are insane. I'm walking into this room and this girl comes over to me and she's like, I can't believe I'm meeting you crying. She, some people will go, oh, that's celebrity. We don't do that. Sure, sure. She starts sobbing. And she goes, when I heard the anthem the first time, Come I on, wanted man. to commit suicide. Wow. And when I heard that God thought like this about me, I gave up every suicidal thought wow. and I've never gone back. Wow. I'm like, well, what do you do with that? Wow. I wouldn't have heard that story yeah. if I would have gone straight to a green yeah. Not that that's Too bad, quick. but you get yeah. what I'm saying. For yeah. me, I'm like, no. We don't want to miss those moments. I'm going to honor every human yeah. being as if they they belong on that platform Come just on. as much as I do. There's no reason I'm on that platform and they're not. No reason except for God just, he, he's doing something that I don't understand. But in the natural, there's no reasoning. Yeah. You know? And I just, so I'll, it's just like, Come I'm just going to keep real low and keep my hands clean. Come you know? On. So. Yeah. Uh, one thing I always tell people is your true authority is based on your authenticity. Yeah. That's something I've always appreciated, loved about you and your music. Nice. But of course, being a musician or an artist or a singer or a minister even, yeah. sometimes there's this whole Christian thing about performing. But, you know, uh, how do you deal with this? You know, being yourself versus performance. Yeah, I, there's a difference between perfectionism and excellence, which I think is the conversation. Because a lot of people use this word excellence, and what they actually mean is perfection. They're looking for the exact compressed snare sound, the right kick sound, the right guitar sound, the right this, the right that. I mean, you're talking to a guy who 90% of the time leads worship with a three-quarter size Ed Sheeran guitar that costs $300, and I run distortion through it. And so, nah. for me... I'm like, let's throw out all the rules. Yeah, Why yeah. do any of these rules exist? Because we've made them up so that we feel good about the way we're performing it, so that we don't ever have to deal with real excellence. Because real excellence has nothing to do with what's out here. Hmm. Let, let's, let, me look, let me say okay. it this way. Fear of man, fear of God. The fear of man is I'm more concerned with man's opinion I, I seek man's opinion first before I do anything. That's the fear of okay. man. I know I'm walking in the fear of man if I'm thinking about your opinion before I do something. So what's the fear of the Lord? I'm thinking about God's uh -huh. opinion before I do anything. So now I'm not considering what somebody might say. I'm considering what God's put on my life. Yeah, yeah. I have to be Come true on. to what he's put here. Yeah. That yelling for me is not a show. I don't know how to do it any different. Come on. That is who I am. Yeah, yeah. Like I can't be anybody Come else, on. you know? Yeah. So for me, now we get to excellence and perfectionism. Well, it doesn't say David was perfect at what he did. It said he was excellent. Well, perfectionism means that I won't do anything until it's right. Come on. Excellence says, I know two chords. God gets them all. Come on. That's good. I, this is my excellence. Wholehearted. Right now. This is it. Yeah. I'm a, that's why it says I'm a man. He is a man after my own heart, Come on. which means God uses what he has to work with. You're broken, jacked up, busted up. Me, broken, jacked up, busted up. He's, in a, he's going to partner with my life because mm -hmm. he loves me. Come he's on. not waiting for me to get it right. Come on. And I said it last night, but man, I'm more convinced we are so, so worried about having wrong theology. We stay silent. Mm. We say nothing at all. Instead of just repenting when we realize it's wrong. Mm. Like, that's okay. Come on. You know? So we're like so, so worried. Uh, we say nothing because we're so like, good. I don't know. So for me, I'm like, let's just be the edge of the sword. Because if I go to 100 and maybe a few kids go to 15, we're doing a great Come job. Because I don't want them to be me. Yeah. I want to go so far that they're like, well, if he's allowed to do that. Come on. Come on. Maybe I could push yep. the envelope yep. a little yep. bit. Come on. Because we're making definitions that don't exist. Yeah, yeah. These are, worship music isn't a real thing. Mm. Mm. That's, that's a corporate labeling of a style. That's good, yeah. To sell you a CD. Wow, that's good. I mean, right? Like, yeah. it's not like in scripture, I, let's just put it this way. In Psalms, we wouldn't sing half the Psalms. But mm. yet, they're 
Worship songs. I mean, when was the last time you walked into a church and it's like, slaughter my enemies, let their blood spill from Zion. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the chorus of the song. Yeah, yeah. Let it spill, let it spill, <laughs> let it spill. Blood, 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 <laughs> slaughter my enemies. You know what I mean? It's like, we ain't singing songs like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Because to us, we, we're like, well, that's not necessarily worship music, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. And the psalm God, Jesus pulls from, from the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mm. Why? What is he doing? Mm. That's bad theology. Yeah. What is he doing? He's saying, oh, that's what it feels like. Mm. Yeah. It doesn't have to be right. It's a real experience. Well, let me ask you this, Jake. Our time is running out. Uh, uh, with the prophetic and being authentic, um, and in times of, in a sense, rejection, or where people may not be accepting you, uh, you know, rejecting you, and I, I'm sure oh. you may have dealt with this in your own life, but how do you deal with that? Oh.